stars of cross country. They've won the individual and team titles the last two years. Also here, a very strong contingent of American runners. Ahmad Rashad had a chance to visit with them. He went across the country traveling to the homes of the man who won it twice, Craig Virgin. America's finest that you're going to see today live and train farther off the beaten track than most. Now here in Alamosa, Colorado, on the banks of the Rio Grande, population 7,000, elevation 7,500 feet, you'll find Pat Porter working out. It's out of the way. People don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a lot of people watching what I'm doing or paying attention to me. And it is secluded. And that's one of the reasons I like it here. I did go to school here, and I enjoy working out with Coach Hill. 159. And the altitude, I believe, is very beneficial. I know for me, if I train at 7,600 feet and I drop down to a race at sea level, I don't fatigue near as fast as I believe other runners do. When people start feeling the effects of the race, say, maybe two to three miles into it, I'm just starting to warm up and starting to really feel good. Why don't more runners come up and train in, in, in this type of situation? I think a lot of them are afraid of it. They're afraid to come up to altitude because they think, well, they'll be tired all the time. They won't be able to train as hard because they are at altitude. And a lot of people don't believe in it either, but there's a lot of scientific studies that show that training up here does benefit, long distance running particularly. Tell me about your training. Give me an idea of what you do in a week. A typical week, on Sundays, I'll do a long run, like two hours plus, you know, 18 to 20 miles. On Monday, I'll do my repeat halves, my 16 times 800 meters. On Tuesday, I'll, I'll run in the mountains. It's, it's very flat here, and I believe hill training is essential, so we have to travel maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes and we'll run at roughly 10,000 feet altitude. Uh, Wednesday is my rest day. I recover then. Thursday I do my mile repeats. I'll do six times one mile with a three minute rest in between. And if I race on Saturday, I uh, will rest on Friday if I race Saturday in preparation for the race. If not, I'll just go out for 10 or 12 miles. Perhaps the most unusual part of the training takes place here, 10,000 feet above sea level. Twice a week, Pat works out on the great sand dunes of Colorado. Now, it's a tough way of training, but being a power runner, he feels it's a necessity. It's a very hard workout. You can't take it for very long, you know, for more than maybe once or twice a week. It's a very good power training because you, for every two steps you go up, you come back a step. How do you go into a race like this with, with any type of a strategy? In a race like this, you have to get out fast. There's no two questions about it. If you get out very slow, there's going to be several hundred people in front of you. And if you try to pass 200 people in a world championship, you're going to find it's not very easy. One of the runners Pat Porter will have to pass is Craig Virgin, who's from a town half the size of Alamosa. He lives, trains, and works right here in Lebanon, Illinois. I feel very strongly about my roots, and I sense them. And I think uh, the fact that I grew up on a farm and I feel the countryside and I, I've learned to grow up and just like the crops and the animals out there in the farm, I learned to endure the seasons, the cold of the winter, the hot, humid weather in the summertime. And in some ways, I look at upon it not as a disadvantage, but as, a, as an advantage. Between 6.30 and 7, I go out for a, a four to five mile run in the morning and I come back and do 15 or 20 minutes of stretching. Then I go take a shower and have breakfast and head up here to my office at Front Runner, and I work about six hours a day. And then sometime between four and five o'clock, I leave my office, and I go and, and work out. Something that all athletes dread are health problems. You've had some problems in the past. Uh, how are you fighting those now? I had a very large kidney stone removed in August, and I started training again in September, and uh, I think that one of the hardest things for any runner who's been at the top to have to battle, and this applies to any athlete, is to all of a sudden, to after you struggle so hard to get to the top of the pecking order, the top of the hill, the top of the ladder, to have to come back and start all over one or two years later when other guys have taken your place and you're starting at the bottom of the heap and you have to scratch and crawl your way back up. 
Now, it's taken me two years, and I'm getting close. And I know that uh, if I do the right things, that I maybe can make the Olympic team and maybe can return to my form of old. You can bet that the entire town of Lebanon will all be watching as Craig Virgin attempts to come back from injury and win his third World Cross Country title. Now, meanwhile, in Alamosa, Pat Porter, who is currently America's best, will be out to make his mark as the premier cross-country runner in the world. 